Now we got some homework questions sent in. That's a good thing. That means you're doing your homework. Of course, the five or six people that are doing it. But I'm starting to clean. I'm starting to put end dates on homework earlier because people are waiting until the and that's the that's that defeats the whole purpose. So what I'm doing in all my classes now is I am shutting down the homework after I give you all plenty of time to do it. Um, so I'll probably shut this down probably Wednesday because uh, we'll probably be going over the I mean Monday probably probably be going over the test Monday after today. But anyway, let's look at the questions and let me get rid of this and get rid of this and let me list as public a subject now they're in order well, i'm not going to do 6.4 and 6.5 because we already did that 6.6 .6, number 45 6.6 .6, number 45 i'm going to write it down here 6.6 .6, number 45 and number 17 in the book or online. So first of all, is this a test question? Yes, it is a test question. Now this is method one. How do I know it's method one? Well, I'm going to show you. Method one says plot, uh, plot or uh, graph the line by points. OK, that's what it says and points can be called can be called points they can be called coordinates and they can be called ordered pairs okay when you see those words in the directions that means you're going to be using method one okay so y is by itself, so we don't have to get y by itself. Y is equal to 5x minus 2. Ninety percent of the time, if you look at your method one, ninety percent of the time, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Five times parentheses minus 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 two. Five Five times parentheses minus two. Negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. Five times negative two is negative 10. Negative 10 minus two is negative 12. Negative or five times negative one is negative five minus two is negative seven. Zero minus two is negative two and you start to see a pattern. Because you're plotting points to graph the line, you plug and chug and you start to see a pattern. Negative 12, I'm adding five, adding five, and you start to see a pattern. Five times one is five, minus two is three. Five times two is 10, minus two is seven. And now you take your handy dandy straight edge Negative two, negative 12. Negative two, negative 12. Uh, negative one, negative seven. Zero, negative two. One, three. And two, seven. Now I don't have graph paper, so mine's a little bit off. There's your line. And that's how you do method one, which we covered that last week, which was, I don't know what day was that, or Monday, because we didn't have class one. I wonder how many people showed up in virtual classroom Wednesday. Oh, man. Okay, so let's look and see how you do the problem. You go over here and you say, I'm going to draw a line and you click on the line and you pick two of these points. I'm going to pick negative two, negative, well, you can't pick negative 12 
because it only goes to 10. So I'm going to pick negative 1 and negative 7. And then I'm going to pick 0, negative 2. And there you go. And check answer. And you feel good about yourself. All right. Now, I need to go over something right now because um, I've gone over it with all my classes. And, and this reminds me because I know there's somebody out there going, well, I don't know, where do you get all this information? Well, if you'd attended Monday, you'd know where. Uh, and that's what I'm going to talk about because this last thing with uh, My Labs Plus, you know how shaky My Labs Plus has been this week? I'm sorry. My Labs Math, you know, it's been kind of shaky. How do, does anybody know what the, I don't know if that's spelled right, shaky? Oops, I'm sorry, hold on. Did I spell shaky right? How do you spell shaky? I don't look right. I'll just put it in quotation right. marks. I'll put it in quotation marks there. All right. Anybody ever heard of this? Yeah. What's a lone wolf? Tell me what a lone wolf is. Someone who does something by themselves and not yes. in a group. Do, does their own what? Thing. How can I tell who the lone wolves are in my classes? As a teacher. If they're not following you. Well, yeah, but when something happens like the My Labs Plus or the My Labs Maths gets shaky, what do they do? The world is coming to an end because I told y'all in class, what I tell y'all? To breathe, to don't worry about it because I would extend the test another 24 hours. I think I extended y'all's test to what, Monday? Has anybody checked? I think it's showing up as due to night think, for me. Yeah, you, you said like the 31st, didn't it? I thought, okay, I might have not extended I thought I extended it to Monday. Maybe that's the 120 classes. But the whole point is, I told y'all not to what? Not to worry about it, that I would extend the test, right? Well, the people that are lone wolves, they don't hear that. You know why? Because one, they don't attend class. They don't attend. Two, they don't watch the recordings if they don't attend. And three, they don't watch teams for my team's messages. And heaven forbid, they don't oh, check their email. Huh? Or oh, they're starting. I didn't hear you. Say it one more time, Mr. Pack. They're the ones that are starting the uh, team's calls. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, because I don't know any better. All right. Now, how do I know this? Because they, they, when something goes bad, like the shaky, uh, my last plus, they call me and they go, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. What they're doing is they're hanging a sign around their neck that says, I don't come to class and I don't watch your recordings because you're not worthy of my time. That's basically what they're saying. What they do is they get their My Labs Plus and their book and my syllabi or syllabus, and that's what they do. And they do whatever is on the syllabus and whatever's on the homework, and then the test comes. They don't attend class. Now, is this okay? I don't mind it, but when something goes wrong, don't act like the world is what? Ending because you haven't been what? You haven't been attending. All right. Why am I bringing this up now? Because I know there will be people in the class that are going, well, I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what he's doing. Well, one, you didn't watch Monday's class. Two, you didn't pull up the sheets that I gave you the handout that I gave you in Teams Monday. So that's why you don't know what's going on. So I'm moving on. Yeah. Now, we'll get, yeah. What? Um, I need to... 
Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, can you go back to the sheet with the graph and all that? Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay, so you have two seven, but you have two five minus two. Wouldn't that be ten minus two, which would be eight, not seven? Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Just making sure. Okay. Yeah, you're right. I think, see if there's any other errors there. Sometimes I go too fast. Okay. All right. Now, the reason I brought up that lone wolf is because, one, I've, I've, I've just about had it with some of these emails. They act like they don't know what's going on. And I'm tired of, I'm not going to repeat myself. So they need to go back and they need to watch Monday or watch Friday, or they need to watch the first week of class because I'm not going to repeat myself and take the take the time to record and post these videos on YouTube and students ask me the same question just because they're too lazy to go look it up on YouTube. So that's I'm telling all my classes this and I just remember to tell y'all in the middle of this problem. Sorry. All right, so that's that problem. All right, next problem. Next problem is 6.675, 6.675 slash 27 online homework. And that last one was a test question. And this one is a test question. Now it says use the slope intercept. Now that's method three. This one is method three. I'm gonna write everything on my whiteboard before I get started. This is method three, building a line. Build a line. Now, when it says build a line, let me write it down. Y is equal to negative one fifth X minus three. OK, now when you see build a line or method three, that's the third method in your handout that I gave you Monday or put on Teams Monday. That means slope and y-intercept, or slope-intercept. They're not saved by slope-intercept. That's what will be in the directions. Building a line is what I call it. So y is by itself, so you don't have to worry about doing that. I'm going to go ahead and draw the graph right here. There's three things that you need to look at. Can anybody tell me what those three things are? Anybody? Uh, X and Y. Well, uh, that's a good guess, but no, that's not what we're looking at. The first thing is, and I'm going to do it in yellow because it tells you which way the line's going. The sign. Second thing is vertical over horizontal. And third thing is the y intercept. So this line. One, this line is going through the y-intercept at zero comma negative three. Two, it is a negative slope, which means left to right, what? Down. Which way do we read? Uh, left to right. Unless you're from Middle East. Masalama. Three. Vertical over horizontal is equal to one over five. So I'm going to take my handy dandy orange. And there's where I get that. And I'm going to take my yellow. And that's where I get that. And I'm going to take my green. 
And that's where I get that. All this is on that handout that I gave y'all, method three. And we didn't go over it Monday, but we went over method and I started on method two. I think I did method two. OK, and the reason I'm not going over it over method three is because I knew we'd go over it soon with the homework questions. So now I plot first zero, negative three. One, two, three. I'm going to put an orange circle right there. And my slope. I'm going to use a real light yellow here. I'm doing that on purpose. And I'm going to make it real light because my slope is left to right. What? Negative. There's my trace line. And now I'll just plot your points. So I'm going to take my green line, one vertical, and five horizontal. Trying to find my neon. Hold on. One vertical, so I'm going to go one up and five over. One up, five over. One down, five over. One down, five over. And there, is my line. And that's how you build a line. And of course, once you draw your line, you can erase your trace line if you do it in pencil. Just needs to be a real light dashed line to show you which way the line's going. And that's how you do method three. So I'm going to go back to my question. I'm going to give you a few seconds to. I don't know why it's not. It should be. Is that clear to y'all or is it need focusing? I'm asking y'all because y'all see it better than I do. Looks all right. OK. OK, everybody have a chance for that one? So let's go back to the question. And my y intercept is 0, negative 3. And I'm going to go up 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that should be it. It's a miracle. Now there's other ways to teach this. This is a Hubertism way. This right here is the way I teach it. There's a lot of teachers that don't teach this, so you might not have ever seen this before. They tell you to put the negative with the slope, and that confuses a lot of students. The negative, either you're going to go left to right down, or if it's positive, you're going to go left to right what? Up. And that takes the confusion out of the putting the sign with the vertical over horizontal. I don't like doing that. In fact, I came up with this, this right here when I was a student. So I doubt very seriously that you've ever seen that before with the trace line, unless there's another teacher out there that thinks like me, and that's good. That's okay. I'm not saying I patented this, but this is what I did when I was a student. OK. So let's do a nerd. That's a good test question. All these are good test questions having to do with graphing a line. 6.6, I think that's the same question. Oh yeah, Miss Williamson might have sent two accidentally. Sometimes when you hit the button twice, you don't know you're hitting the button twice. 6.6, 7.7, Seventy seven slash twenty eight online. Is it a test question? Oh, yeah. Method. Technically, method two. Okay. 
Um, take the three across to the, and look what it says, using the, okay, I'm sorry, using the slope and y-intercept, this is method two. I meant method three, sorry. Let's write it down. It says, it says 4x minus 3y plus 3 is equal to 0, and they want you to use slope and the y-intercept, which is method 3. Somebody tell me what you have to do to do method three and method one. What has to be done, listen red. What has to be done in order to do method three or method one? Somebody look on your notes that I gave y'all. Has to do with why. Look at method one and method three. Is it to get Y by itself? Y has to be by itself. I'm going to put that right over here. In order to do method one or three, Y has to be by what? Itself. So, I've got to do some algebra here before I even start. So the first thing I'm going to do is get this 3 across the river. So that's going to be 4x minus 3y is equal to negative 3. And then I got to take this 4x. How do you get rid of adding 4x? It's, uh... You take it across the river or you subtract 4x. And you get negative 3y is equal to negative 4x minus 3. How do you get rid of multiplying by negative 3? How do you undo multiplying by negative 3? Divide by it. Thank you for the interaction. So... Why? That's where I messed up. Good. You found it. Good, good, good. Y is equal to four thirds X. Negative three divided by negative three is one. And now you can do the intercept method or the slope and Y intercept. I'm going to, there's my yellow because that is understood to be what if it's not there it's understood to be what positive and my green is four over three and my orange is positive one so i'm gonna go to the next page so we can do that. I'm going to leave this up for a few more seconds. OK. So we've got one. My y-intercept. is zero comma one two my graph is positive and three my vertical over my horizontal is four over three and this is yellow And this is orange. And this is verde. Let's see. Como se dice orange espanol? Uh, 
Nobody knows how to say orange in Spanish. I know yellow is amarillo, and green is for day. How do you say orange? Nobody knows. Y'all suck. All right. So here we go. I'm going to take my handy dandy straight edge and I'm going to draw me a piece of graph or a graph. And I'm going to plot my y intercept. And I'm going to add my trace line. You would use a pencil and do it real light, real light dash line. It's really light, barely touching and take the green and do your vertical over horizontal four down one two three four one two three four up one two three four one two three there's your line piece of cake And that's all uh, we haven't done the second method. I'm hopefully somebody sent a homework problem with the second method. Let's go ahead and graph this. So I'm going to pick uh, what was it? Uh, zero one. And then I'm going to go four up. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three. That should be it. It's a miracle. And that's how you do that one. Now let's look at this one. 6.681 slash 29. 6.681. 29. Come on, method two. Method two. Method two. Determine the equation. Okay, now we haven't done this yet, but I'm going to show you how to do it. Here you have to do, you have to calculate the slope and use the point slope equation. Point slope equation. So I need you to turn to that page where it says properties of lines. It's the last two pages. The last two pages. Everybody got them? You should. Everybody should have printed them out by now. Okay. And we're going to write this down. Let me write this down right quick. You got a line, you got a you got a graph. And they show you two points, and that's the points you got to use. One point is right here, and that point is zero, comma, four. And this point up here is called one comma nine. All right, so I've got it drawn for y'all. There's the question. Now the two formulas that you need to write down are slope is equal to y sub two minus y sub one over x sub two minus x sub one. And we'll do the point slope equation after we finish the, the slope. Now, you notice that I'm doing parentheses here. Do y'all notice that? Well, I've got several degrees. I got most of my teeth in my head and I have running water at my house and I still use these parentheses. 
So using these parentheses are not beneath me because I think I know more than the average bear. Why am I telling you that? Because some of y'all students think that they don't need to use the parentheses and then they whine and cry when they get the problem wrong. So since I have several degrees in running water and I use parentheses, most of you should use the parentheses. So which way do we read? Left or right. So this is y x of one, y sub one, and this would be x of two and what? Y sub two, plug and chug, go ahead and do that. Y sub two is nine, Y sub one is four. X sub two is one. X of um, X of one is zero. Nine minus four is five. One minus zero is one. So our slope is equal to five. That's how you calculate the slope. Now we're going to use the point slope equation. The point slope equation, you've got to have a point. And you've got to have a slope. If you're finding the slope, could you not just like count? Yes, but you need to be able to calculate it. Okay. You need to be able to calculate it because sometimes you're not going to have those boxes. Sometimes you're going to have fractions. Sometimes you're going to have decimals. Are you going to be able to count decimals and fractions? If I give mm. you a decimal or a fraction here? Nope. No, because most of y'all would quit and not even do it because y'all can't even read. Some of y'all can't even read a tape measure. And I don't mean y'all in here. I mean all of my students. So that's why you have to do it this way. OK, now the equation says y minus y sub one is equal to m times x minus x sub one. And look at here, this is x sub one. This is y sub one and you got m. So I want you all right now to plug those in to this right here. Of course, I'm going to write parentheses because I need them. Of course, some of y'all don't need them because y'all know more than I do. X minus parentheses. I'm going to carry this over to the next page. So I want you to take your parentheses here and I want you to plug these three numbers where they go right here. And I'm going to help you out a little bit by using some highlighters. So this, bless you. This is y sub one. So that would go where? Right there. And use pink. This is zero. That's x sub one. So it's going to go right there. And I'm running out of colors. So I want to use. Uh, let me use something. Well, I guess I'll have to use yellow. And there's my slope. I use green for slope. So let's use green for slope. That goes right there. Now I'm sorry, but that's not hard. Four. Five and what? Zero. Now you're just going to solve for y. I'm going to go up here. So y minus four is equal to distribute that five. And that's going to be five x minus zero. And bring that four across the river. Y is equal to five X plus four. 
And that is the equation of that line. I'm going to leave that there for a minute. Is this a test question? Oh, yeah. All of these that, that we've done today are test questions and SAT questions. Because if you can't do what we're doing right now, you can't do it in science, you can't do it in economics, you can't do it in marketing, you can't do it anywhere. Anything with Sounds a graph. To live in a ditch. Yep, and live in a van down by the river in a ditch. Okay, so that's that. All right, so let's go to our the equation of the line. Now, I don't see a Y, so I'm going to put Y. I don't know if they want Y, but we'll find out. Y is equal to 5X plus 4. Now, if they mark me wrong, it's because that they don't want the Y. They just want 5X plus 4. But I think since they say the equation of the line, I assume they're wanting the Y in there. And that would be a yes. So make sure you include the Y equals when you type that in. Capish, comprende? All right, let's look at the last one. Oh, somebody sent, Ms. Grindle sent me sent another one. No, that's 6.4. 6.6, 83, 6.6, 83 slash 30. 6.6, 83 slash 30. And let's see what it looks like. Graph the equation and state the slope of the line. Okay, now in your notes, I want you to look at the second page of the two pages at the end. The properties of lines. Okay. The last two pages, I want you to look, I think on the second page, somebody tell me if this is correct or not. You've got X is equal to a number. It's parallel to the Y axis. Y is equal to a number. It's parallel to the what? X-axis. Everybody see that on their page? For the one or two people that printed them out? Somebody tell me if you see it. Yes or no? Okay, now I know how many people printed them out. Nobody. Okay. All right. X is equal to a number. It's parallel to the Y-axis, which means it's what kind of a line? A vertical line, which means the slope is equal to undefined. If y is equal to a number parallel to the x-axis, it's a horizontal line, and m is equal to zero. Did anybody find that page? Oh, I found, I found it now. Good, good. So what is this one? Somebody look at this one. Which one is this one? Is it X is equal to a number or Y is equal to a number? Be a vertical line. I'm sorry, I didn't. I broke up. What? Be a vertical line. X is equal to a number. It's parallel yeah. to the Y axis. So you find X is equal to one. There it is. You put a dot right there and you draw a line. That's what? Parallel to the. And there is your line. And the slope. Is undefined on a vertical line. And you should have that on that page, that second page. I think I even highlighted it in yellow or green. Anybody notice which one? I, I think I highlighted in yellow or green. Let's look and see, because I know there's two or three of y'all out there that have no earthly idea of what I'm talking about. 
right down here. I sent out yesterday or Monday, so y'all could be reading it. I sent out a file, and that file is called 6.6 .6 handouts. Monday at 11.53, about 20 minutes before class start. And I'm going to go to the last page, which should be the second page of the properties. Second page, yep, yellow and green. There it is. If X is equal to a number is parallel to the Y axis. If Y is equal to a number is parallel to the what? X axis. Let me move all this back around now. Hold on. I'm not doing that. Try to be a smart aleck. I just, I just, I'm getting a little bit tired of people being the lone wolves. I just get a little bit tired of it. All right. So x is equal to one. You plot x is equal to one, and one more at x is equal to one. There you go. What is the slope, A or B? Alpha or Bravo? B. B, Bravo. That's a good test question. Okay, now we just finished, and we only got like 10 minutes left, okay? Or 15 minutes, or somewhere around there, uh, 13 minutes. Let me go ahead and look at, and let me erase these because I did these. Delete, 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 delete. There we go, and I'm not doing those. Okay, so that one's gone. All right, so that leaves one, uh, when, uh, Monday for more questions. Now I'm going to show you the rest of, let me show you again how to do the, two, the method two. So I'm going to go to my course. And I'm going to pull up your homework. Math 155, 6.6. Uh, let's go to assignments, 6.6. Right there. And let's see if I can just find one with method two. How do I know it's method two? Because it'll say using the intercepts. Of course, I don't know. I probably won't be able to find one. Well, let's see if I can find one. Plotting points, that's method one. That's method one. That's method one. Uh, now, what if it doesn't give you, write this down in your notes. What if it doesn't give you a method? What are you supposed to do, skip it and not do it? What if it doesn't give you a method and it just says graph? What are you supposed to do? Anybody? Write this down. If it just says graph, you can use any method you want. You got that? If it just says graph, you can use any method you want. Does anybody know which one I would use on this one? Anybody? Well, you know it's going to be method one or method three. Why? Because Y is what? By itself. I'm going to use method three. Method three is the easiest one to use. So that's why I would use method three. Next. Um, okay, here we go. Here's method two. Uh, that was a little bit too easy. I want to use one that's a little bit. Got some negatives in it. Well, I showed you how to do one with all positives. OK, so I guess we don't have one. Let's go with this one. No. Let's go with that one. It's 115. It's all I thought it was 125. Dang it. All right, I'm going to do this problem for you. And those of you that want to leave can leave, but I'm going to do it. All right. So 6.6, .6, 
57. It says graph 3x plus y is equal to negative 9. And the first thing you do is you draw a big table like this. And you put the x-intercept here, zero for y, and the y-intercept here, zero for x. Now it doesn't matter which one you put on the left side and which one you put on the right side. What does matter is what? That whenever, if you're in marketing, business, economics, biology, if you're in the precinct at your local precinct of law enforcement and you're working on crimes in the neighborhood and you're drawing a graph, well, this, to find your x-intercept, you always plug in zero for what? Y. To find your x at y-intercept, you always plug in zero for what? X. And that's what they're trying to get you to learn here. So if you ever experience a graph in your career, you know how to find the X and Y intercept. And now I'll put the problem below it and watch what I do here. 3X plus Y is equal to negative 9. 3X plus Y is equal to negative 9. And what do you notice? What did I do there? I put the zero right where it needs to be. And now plug in what? Plug and chug, Hubert. 3x plus zero is equal to negative nine. 3x plus zero is 3x. Divide by three. X is equal to negative three. And that negative three goes right there. Three times zero plus y is equal to negative nine. Zero plus y is equal to negative nine. Y is equal to negative nine. And plot those two points and draw your line. And just to make sure you understand, negative three and zero is the x-intercept. Zero, negative nine is the y-intercept. And that is your line. And that's how you do method two. Okay, continue to work on 6.6 .6 homework. And we will continue Monday. But that will probably be the last day to go over questions. So make sure you send them in. Anybody got any questions? All right, y'all have a good day and I'll see y'all have a good weekend too. Have a good one. Make sure y'all leave. If anybody left, I'll have to kick out. You have Look a good one. Sleep Happy or whatever. Have a good one. Okay, everybody's leaving. Okay. <laughs>